Now discuss about the pre-tracheal fascia. You have seen in previous lectures investing layer of deep cervical fascia. Now pre-tracheal fascia. In this diagram, you can see this is trachea, this is esophagus, this is esophagus, this is trachea. Here is investing layer of cervical fascia which covers this near sternocleidomastoid muscle. From deep layer and extension passes medial side and forms the anterior sheath of the anterior part of the carotid sheath. This is carotid sheath. And from here this extend towards the this is thyroid gland and here this fascia is split and enclose this thyroid gland. This is pre-tracheal fascia which is split and enclose thyroid gland. Like this. And here it continues with the opposite side in medial care. And what important thing this fascia is anteriorly thick and posteriorly it is very thin. This fascia is posteriorly very thin. And here at the level of required cartilage. At the level of required cartilage, a ligament is formed. This is known as ligament of the berry, which is attached with the required cartilage. This is ligament of berry. Through this thyroid gland is attached with this required cartilage. This part is very thin. This part is thick and this part is thin. This is the region. Why? In case of enlargement of thyroid gland, this thyroid gland may bulge towards this side, like this. Because this part is covered by fascia which is very thin due to bulging and compression of the esophagus it produces dysphagia this is difficulty in swallowing and also it compresses the nerve here is a recurrent laryngeal nerve which causes the hoarse of the voice so this is pre tracheal fascia. If you trace vertically, this is horizontal, horizontal uh, tracing, if you trace vertically you will find this is hide bone, this is hide bone This is thyroid cartilage. This is quicoid cartilage. This is thyroid cartilage. This is quicoid cartilage. Here are the tracheal rings. Here is division of the trachea. This is tracheal ring. So this pre-tracheal fascia vertically is attached with this is hyoid bone and then attached with here is oblique line of the thyroid cartilage. This is oblique line of the thyroid cartilage and here this is pre quiet cartilage and this is here is tracheal rings. So it and really attached with the trachea. And here, 
as it re passes from neck to thoracic region. This is Sipson fascia or suprapleural membrane. This is suprapleural membrane. Membrane. Also known as Sipson fascia. Sipson's fascia. So it also merged with the Sipson fascia. And after passing over the trachea, here it merged with the this is here is position of pericardium and great vessels. Here is position of the pericardium and great vessels. So it merged with the pericardium and the root of great vessels. Inferior. So this is vertical extension of this pre-tracheal fascia. So this is all about the pre-tracheal fascia. One important thing and that is this here you can see this uh, pre-tracheal fascia here attached with the quicoid cartilage and here is position of the thyroid gland this is position of thyroid gland due to this attachment during deglutation this thyroid gland moves up and down during deglutition so this is all about the pre-tracheal fascia. Thank you. Now discuss about the pre-vertebral fascia and the modification of the deep cervical fascia. Here you can see this is vertebra and here lies muscles around the vertebra. It covers the vertebra and muscles around this. So this fascia is pre-vertebral fascia. It merges on left hand side with the investing layer of the deep, cer deep cervical fascia and inferiorly it gives extension from the axillary sheath around the brachial plexus and subclavian artery. Subclavian vein lies outside to this sheath. So here you can see nerves, here nerves arise. This is dorsal ramus, this is ventral ramus. These nerves form the brachial plexus and cervical plexus and passes here and inferior level and is covered by axillary sheath. If you see in vertical position, a vertical tracing to this fascia, this fascia, this pre vertebral fascia, you will find This is base of the skull, this is sphenoid bone, this is sphenoid air sinus. Here is position of this is axis, here is atlas, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, sorry, first, second, third, fourth. 5th, 6th, 7th, 7th cervical, then 1st thoracic, 2nd thoracic and 3rd thoracic, 4th thoracic, T4, this is T3, vertebra. This vertebra is anteriorly covered by anterior ligament, this is anterior ligament by which anteriorly covered and here is This is pre-vertebral fascia, which is attached to the base of the skull here. It attached with this anterior ligament and extend up to T3 or T4 vertebra. It may end up to T4 vertebra or sometimes T3 vertebra. This fascia is pre 
vertebral fascia vertebral fascia as you can see it lies anterior to vertebra from first c1 to t4 or t3 vertebra this is pre vertebral fascia actually this pre vertebral fascia here it divides it and gives under fascia that is alar fascia this is alar fascia this fascia merge with buccopharyngeal membrane this is buccopharyngeal membrane it merge with the membrane known as buccopharyngeal membrane this is median raphe this position of this is superior constrictor of the pharynx here is this is superior constrictor of the pharynx here is middle constrictor of the pharynx this is inferior constrictor of the pharynx superior middle and inferior constrictor of the pharynx this is pharynx here is this is pre vertebral fascia here is space between buccopharyngeal membrane this is buccopharyngeal membrane it is covered by Inner fascia, which is part of this prevertebral fascia, this. between these two there is potential space is filled with loose connective tissue. This is known as retropharyngeal space. This space is retropharyngeal space. In this diagram, this space lies here, something here, and if this space contains pharyngeal plexus of the nerve. It has pharyngeal plexus of the nerve. Infection of this space may spread, that is, this space may spread laterally up to here, here, here. First, may reach all these spaces. And also, sometimes, a bulging is present in the posterior wall of the pharynx. This is posterior wall of the pharynx. There may be bulging seen in the posterior wall of the pharynx. If you see from anterior side. This is retropharyngeal abscess. So, uh, this is all about the pre-vertebral fascia. Thank you. Now, we will discuss about the another modification of the deep cervical fascia that is carotid sheath here is internal carotid artery this is internal carotid artery sorry this is common carotid artery this is common carotid artery this is common carotid artery and medial side lateral side there is internal jugular vein this is internal jugular vein if you enlarge this diagram like this. On medial side, this is common carotid artery, and on lateral side, there is internal jugular vein. This is internal jugular vein, and here is a nerve lies between these two. This is vagus nerve. This is vagus nerve, and the nerve lies here. This is sympathetic chain. This is sympathetic chain. And the thing which lies anteriorly, which is embedded in the sheath, this is ensa cervicalis, loops of the ensa cervicalis. Here is. This anterior fascia, this fascia is formed by the investing layer anteriorly and this posterior layer is formed by extension of this pre-vertebral fascia like this. 
lateral part this lateral part of this fascia is thin and medial part is thick this is medial part is thick this lateral thin part allow more blood passes passing through this vein so this is all about the carotid sheath thank you